I recently had someone ask me how they could have a profitable launch without an email list. And my answer was, you can't. Okay, I'm sure somebody has, I'm sure a lot of people have, but that's not something I've ever done. It's not something I help my clients do. So today we're focusing on the email list. If you're launching any time this year, any time in the next 12 months before you focus on your content plan, your pre-launch, heck, even your program content, you need to focus on growing your email list. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, everything that used to work has changed. And now all of those strategies that were so dependable for growing your email list are starting to fizzle out a little bit. So I'm gonna walk you through what is working right now when it comes to growing your email list. And stay tuned to the end because I'm giving you a little bonus tip of how to nurture and qualify those leads once they are in your world, in your system, so that you can have the most profitable launch possible. If we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Brittany McBean. I am a launch strategist and copywriter and we help our clients have really profitable launches. We do the strategy and copy behind an entire launch funnel. Our clients, depending on the size of their business, are usually having launches anywhere from $150,000 all the way up to $1 million launches. And the difference between the six-figure launch and the million-dollar plus launch is not how amazing the brand is, how engaging the brand owner or personal brand or CEO is. It is not how amazing the offer is because all of my clients' offers are validated and amazing and it's not the price of the offer. The difference is the size of their email list. This is one of those cases where size matters. Because here's the thing, conversion scale. So let's say you have a $200 offer and your live launch converts at 3%. You would make $1,200 with that list of 20 people, but you would make $12,000 with that list of 2,000 people. And if you were launching to your list of 20,000 email subscribers, you would walk away at a 3% conversion, you would walk away with $120,000 in the bank. And it's the same amount of effort no matter what. Launching is a lot of work, but it's the same amount of work whether you're launching to a 20 person email list or a 2000 person email list. Okay, your list growth strategy is your top of funnel strategy. You probably already know about the most common funnel and that is the freebie or opt-in or lead magnet funnel where you are exchanging something for free behind an opt-in wall in exchange for their first name and email address. Please do not add like last name and phone number and address. Those are barriers to entry friction, we don't need it, first name, email address, that's it. So the whole strategy behind a freebie is you create something of value that you are willing to give your audience for free if they give you their email address. And that is how a lot of people have built their email list over the past few years. That is still working, but I'll be honest, the freebie is getting a little old and dusty. It's likely that your lead or reader has opted into a million freebies and they understand at this point, whether this is true for your business or not, the experience that they have had is that they're not really getting quality information. They likely got something that somebody threw together for free just to get their email list and they didn't act on it, they didn't use it, it didn't give them any transformation or solution to their problem. So that means that the people who are opting in from a freebie are number one, people looking for free stuff. They are not qualified buyers. And number two, they are likely predisposed to not trust your free offer. So yes, the freebie strategy does work and I'm gonna tell you how to figure out what that should be if that's the funnel that you wanna use, but what we are seeing gain traction and actually start performing better than some freebies is a low ticket offer. I don't mean a self-liquidating offer funnel, a slow funnel. That's a much more complicated strategy. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about an offer that has a price tag between like, let's say $10 and $50, where your reader understands that they are paying a low cost to get valuable information from you. This strategy is not as much about profit as it is about getting in the right qualified leads, but when you are offering a paid product, you are obviously going to make some money and you can also liquidate your ads costs should you choose to run ads. And the reality is the low ticket offer funnel, and not a slow funnel, a low ticket offer funnel and the freebie funnel are basically the exact same amount of work. You're just adding in a checkout cart. I use Thrivecart, I love Thrivecart. You can use whatever works for you, but that's really the only thing you're adding in when you put a price tag onto your valuable information. I highly suggest that you test out a low ticket offer this year. It's something we're building out and we're gonna start testing and I have seen my clients have so much success with it and I have friends who are saying that their $30 offers are performing way more than their free offers. So, something worth testing. 
The other thing that's been really popular are quizzes, and we're starting to see a shift around quizzes as well. The theory has been that people want to know more about themselves, they want to find out about something, they want to be diagnosed with something, so by taking your quiz they can figure out something new about themselves which is really sexy, really attractive, and much easier than trying to get them to buy something or download a worksheet. Here's the thing, the majority of the people that take personality quizzes are millennials. So if your market is not millennials or it is growing out of or expanding past millennials, this strategy may not be hitting your target audience. It's also likely that a personality quiz may not be connected to your actual marketing and segmenting goals because, hang with me here, when you are creating a quiz, usually what happens is the results that people get gives them a segment or a tag in your email list. So if you are segmenting people by their pizza personality, mm, are you able to use that for your email marketing? So yes, quizzes do still work, but they have to provide actual value for the reader, where at the end of that, they are not only gonna gain information about themselves, but they are going to gain information that they can take action on, not just what type of blank personality they are. And I've been talking about this content that you have to give someone in exchange for their email address, but if your newsletter or your weekly broadcast or whatever you call it has a strong enough value prop where that alone is a sexy offer, you can just have a call to action to your newsletter just to get people to opt in. This can work really well, but you do have to sit down and figure out what your value prop is for your emails. All right, so what do you even decide to create as that top of funnel offer, whether it is free, whether it is paid, whether it is a quiz that somebody is opting into in order to get on your email list? Your top of funnel offer has to connect to the paid offer that you want to sell. You have to reverse engineer the process. So this means if you are a nutrition coach and you have a program or a course that you are live launching or a group program around nutrition or coaching or something like that, Maybe you don't want your top of funnel offer to be the top three places in your home you should organize. But we do want it to be a valuable, quick, simple win. This is not something that somebody is going to have to take days, weeks, or even months to use. So for that nutrition coach, your top of funnel offer, free or paid, might be something like um, the best one pot meals you can cook every night of the week. And then it's just simple recipes. Or maybe it's a $15 high protein, low sugar shopping list that people can buy and get all of the guesswork taken out of their shopping. They don't have to read ingredients, they don't have to read labels, they know exactly where to go because you've put together that shopping list for them. Or let's say you teach a Facebook ads course. Well, if your top of funnel was something like the top SEO strategies to use on your website, sure it's marketing, sure it's online marketing, not really connected to Facebook ads. But what if your top of funnel offer was like the five swipes of the top performing Facebook ads in the last six months? Or a list of proven headline formulas for Facebook ads in 2023? Something relevant, something concrete, that is exciting to your audience. Bottom line, you want that top of funnel offer to connect to the benefits, the value, the value prop, and the outcome of your eventual product that you would like to sell them. That is how you're getting the qualified leads in. So think, in six months, if I want somebody to be ready for this product, where might they be today? Where might they be two weeks, three weeks, three months, six months before they are ready to buy my offer? And how can I start getting them quick wins there? The things that perform the best are super concrete plug and play resources like templates, spreadsheets, checklists, calculators, cheat sheets, mini courses. If it is too big, too broad, there's a such thing as too much value, not from a profitable standpoint, but from overwhelming people. Who cares if you give away the farm and they didn't pay much for it? You will overwhelm them if you give away too much information. So if it is too big, too high level, too overwhelming, well, it's overwhelming. They're not likely to follow through, therefore they did not get any wins from you, from your solution. Why would they buy from you next? But if it's a super concrete resource that they can grab, use, plug in, whatever it is, get that quick win immediately, that is going to grab more engaged and qualified leads on your list. But remember, if they are opting in for something free, you have just attracted a bunch of people who are looking for free things. That's not automatically bad. That does not mean that those are not people that are perfect buyers, perfect students, perfect clients, but it does mean that you just brought them in with something free. That is where their expectation is. 
Whereas if there's a low and affordable and accessible price tag on some valuable information, you have just attracted a qualified buyer who has said, I am ready to spend my money with you because I trust you. So even if the conversions or the number of leads coming in are slightly smaller, which it may not be, even if it is, those are going to be better leads that are going to convert into buyers because they're already buyers. Okay, are you ready for that little bonus tip? Because just getting people on your list may not mean that they're going to convert into buyers later down the road when you do live launch. Whether it's tomorrow or three months or six months or a year from now, you actually have to do something with those leads, engage with those people in a way that allows them to continue to warm up and move through your buying journey, stages of awareness, and your funnel to be ready for your offer when you launch. Now, you do need an email service provider to do this. I use ConvertKit, I love ConvertKit, I'll link that down below, but this isn't something you would do if you were just using Gmail. When someone joins your list, they are going to go through a nurture sequence or an autoresponder or a welcome sequence, or if you're really gross, we can call it an indoctrination sequence, but that feels mm, a little culty, so let's not. This is typically a short sequence of previously written emails that when someone joins your list, they're going to automatically get this sequence, whether it's for three days, four days, a week, two weeks, they're going to go through this sequence of emails where you are basically warming them up to your brand and your offer. Now look, a lot of the old like welcome sequence templates and nurture sequence strategies kind of just aren't working anymore. You've probably heard people say like, email number one, tell a story, email number two, like give them your story, connect with them, and email number three, give them content, or whatever those things are that you usually hear with a welcome sequence. But here's the thing, the most people are going to open that first email. After that, you're going to start losing people. And the truth is, nobody really gives a shit about your story. I mean, like, it's nice and it will connect you with them and you do have to leave with your personality and you do have to leave with your values. But at the end of the day, the reality is if you can engage them enough to get them to stick around, they'll learn about your story. They'll figure out who you are. They will go and learn from you and listen to you and figure out what you're all about. But they're not gonna do that if you can't engage with them right away. So if your very first email delivers that content, opt-in product, whatever, they're going to open that, they're going to get that, we want them to use it. So think of that almost as like the onboarding email. Give them a first step, here you go, here's that thing, now go do this. But don't stop there, that is your most opened email. They may not open the next email, let's use that real estate that we have while we're in front of them. What I want you to do is to use this email to start segmenting your list immediately. Whether it is segmenting them for the right product, whether it is segmenting them for where they are in their journey, in their buying journey, in their stage of awareness. If you can put a tag on this person the second they come into your email list, then you can use that segment for your email marketing. When you market to segments and you give them relevant information, your email marketing is significantly more profitable. So in that first or second email, you can basically ask them, hey, which one of these describes you? You can say, I don't wanna send you information that is not relevant to you. I have people on my list that are X, I have people on my list that are X, and I don't want to spam your inbox with stuff that is not relevant or does not apply to you. Will you tell me which one of these you are so that I am only sending you information that is relevant to you? And then they click that link, it automatically tags them, they might go to a landing page that just says thank you, they might go to like a piece of content. You're just giving them a place to go so that you can give them a tag. In your nurture sequence, if you are including content, here's a YouTube, here's a podcast, here's a blog that I wrote, you can tag the people who click on those as people who would be interested in that kind of content or as highly engaged leads. You could keep your nurture sequence super short, super sweet, and basically get them a couple emails and then have them go onto your house list to get your weekly or bi-weekly or monthly emails, whatever it is that you send. And to figure out how your emails are actually performing, well, I have a freebie for you. And yes, it is something where you will opt into, you will give me your email address, you will get on my list where I'm constantly giving away free value, more information, anytime I have a new freebie, a new offer, you are the first ones to find out about it. And in exchange, you are going to get an email tracker. This is a proprietary spreadsheet that we use with all of our clients. There's a mini training in there on how to use it and how to like code and organize your emails, whether it is a nurture sequence or launch emails. This is where you can organize all of your emails so you're not sifting through hundreds of pages of Google Docs, but it's also where you can track your email performance so that you can go see exactly what is working and what is not. So make sure the link is down below, but just go to brittanymcbean.com forward slash launch sidekick and you will get a free email tracker that we use for our high paying clients every single time.
you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and that little bell somewhere where you are watching this because the next video that I'm releasing is how to plan your launch. And no, not just like putting up your pre-launch content, how to actually 15 weeks before you start plan out every single task that you have to do in order to launch an offer because it can be kind of overwhelming. All right, if you like this, if you want more email marketing tips or wanna get more specific on things like segmenting, like creating a low ticket offer, let me know in the comments below and we can dive in deeper to any one of these topics. All right, I'll see you in the next video.